On the morning of January 25th, 2023, the West Manchester Police Department responded to a requested welfare check in York County, Pennsylvania. The neighbors of the Dobb family called out of concern after hearing three gunshots ring out in succession just before midnight the previous night. When police arrive on scene and they make their way into the backyard, the three family members who lived at the house are laid out on the ground in a straight line. All three deceased, each with one gunshot wound to the head, some notes left behind, and one of the strangest stories that I've heard recently. Hello everyone. I'm returning power to the people of the United Kingdom. Not anymore, Wendy Rogers. Force me, or trick me, or manipulate me into accepting. And they fucked with the wrong family. They really fucked with the wrong family. The one true king, king of kings, lord of lords, king Jesus, the one true. Amen. Yo, what is good, you darkaholics? Welcome back to the dark side of life, where I will be telling you some very dark stories. So, let's just get into it. Right away, I want to say that there's a lot of misinformation floating around about this story. So I tried my best to narrow it down for you guys and give you what are the facts of this case. With that being said, most of, if not all of the raw details that I share with you about the crime scene, the bodies, etc. will be coming directly from the police report published by Chief of Police, John C. Snyder. When learning about 26-year-old Morgan Elizabeth Daub, in the year 2000, her and her parents would move into their home on Loman Avenue when Morgan was roughly three years old, which is ultimately the same house that they would be found dead at. There is no solid way for me to tell you exactly what their family dynamic was like at home. Her parents, Deborah and James Dobb, were devout Christians and were raising their daughter the same. At eight or nine years old, Morgan would begin bowling at one of the local bowling alleys and it took her no time at all to fall in love with the game, picking it up extremely quickly and almost immediately starting to compete in competitions in the youth league at the Lincoln Way Bowling Alley, which today no longer remains. She became an avid bowler, someone that the staff became familiar with and they knew her on a certain level. According to a woman named Paula Wolf, who worked at the Lincoln Way Bowling Alley while Morgan was competing there, described her as definitely a reserved girl. She was shy and quiet, but genuinely seemed happy, saying that she would get really excited and happy any time that she had a great bowling score or was learning something new about the game she had fallen in love with. Morgan was accompanied by her mother more than her father, so the staff was more familiar with the mom, but it stated that both parents were friendly. When Paula saw the mother and daughter interact, she said that nothing ever seemed off and there was never negativity between the two. Morgan would compete in the youth competitions at Lincoln Way until it closed down in 2013, at which point she would switch over to suburban Bolarama where she would finish her final years in youth competitions. While doing so would impress a lot of people, get recognized in the papers, as well as earning a number of scholarships after competing in the tournaments. Morgan bowled a perfect 300 twice, I think, which is incredibly impressive. In 2017, Morgan would continue playing in single competitions while at the same time joining an adult doubles league with her mother Deborah, where they would compete and apparently play very well together, which is another reason they kind of knew mom more than dad. He wasn't always with them. Being on the outside looking in, it seems like a normal family. At first, I thought Morgan was attending the Maasai University located in Mechanicsburg because that's what the family told Paula and another woman who knew them. According to a spokesperson for that university, Morgan was accepted in 2015, but she never earned any credits there or attended class there, making the family statements shaky at best. Long story short, she was a killer bowler, a shy, introverted person who somehow lost it and decided that she needed to die and her parents decided to die with her.
The first real evidence of a mental issue going on with Morgan publicly was posted in a video by Morgan. Now this is somewhat of an erratic video. At first, she seems to clearly be joking, and then a minute in, not so much. Abdicating the throne of England, being the perfect pick for the Antichrist, and a daughter of the Most High God. Keep in mind that those that saw her compete in bowling competitions on the regular said they never saw this side of her, saying that that was not the Morgan they once knew. This video was posted on November 26, 2022. Two months later, they were dead. Here's some clips of that rant. Hello, everyone. Hello. I, I thought I should use this accent, really. Hello, everyone. Morgan Elizabeth Daub here, York, Pennsylvania, United States of America. I hope this travels the world. I really do. Oh, I hate the privacy being stolen, but I hope this uh, rocks the world today. This video, please do, please do send it out. Please do. Mm. Finally, finally, God showed me the reason why. <laughs> Game over, devil. Seven times seventy, please. Harder. Please. I, Morgan Elizabeth Daub, York, Pennsylvania, United States of America, do hereby abdicate the throne of the United Kingdom, along with all the rights, privileges, etc., appertaining thereunto. Today is November 26, 2022. For all intents and purposes, I have formally abdicated. I refuse to be queen. I will not be crowned. No one will force me to be crowned. I'm returning power to the people of the United Kingdom. It's my suggestion. Obviously, I cannot command it. But it is my suggestion that they immediately pursue establishing a republic for their great country. <laughs> oh, please, let this rock the world. My hair's absolutely a mess. I don't care. Abdicating Queen does not care. No Queen Elizabeth III of the United Kingdom. I know they'd love me. I know they would. They wouldn't know what to do with me, actually. No. Elijah has come. They did not know him. But did to him whatever they wished, as it's written of them. You rock the world with this today, Lord. Mm-hmm. Yes. I was next in line for the throne of England. Not a kingdom. Not anymore. Not anymore, Donald Trump. Not anymore, Barack Hussein Obama. Not anymore, Wendy Rogers. Not anymore, y'all. It's done. Oh, I hope they're getting the papers drawn up right now. I need attorneys getting those, those things set right now. Please, as soon as possible. I will, my pen will be hitting the official paper that they get drawn up. Faster than you can say, Queen, really, will be. Oh, uh, you know, the devil goes for too much. Thinks he can outwit the most high God. Uh, this is what happens. I did sign a little bit of a paper here, a little bit of a paper. What the heck? See, I could do so well with it. I do the accent so well, the, the lingo. Fortunately, no. No, Daisy Ridley, the queen. <clears throat> Devil. No. I refuse to be queen, the United Kingdom. I will not be your next queen. If you honor me at all, you will set up a republic, a system of government similar to what the United States has. Our constitution, study it, and uh, get yourself something similar. Throw off the royalty, throw off the monarchy. Somebody somewhere down the line decided they were gonna be royal. Nobody was actually born royal. And then somebody else went along with it. Nobody's above anybody else. We're all made in the image of God. <laughs> this is funny. This is what this was the, the 
an ultimate plan against me and against God. Didn't know I was the ideal pick for Antichrist, but the devil. Mm. <laughs> for all intents and purposes I have abdicated, I refuse to be queen. No one will ever force me or trick me or manipulate me into accepting the throne, accepting the crown. No one ever. I don't know how to flip. This. I don't think I can flip this. I'm going to have to figure out how to show it. It's a little bit backwards. Oh, well. Turn things upside down all the time. That's it. I'll take a picture of it in another video. There it is. My signature. What the? I hate these selfie videos. Why do they flip everything around? It's stupid. Don't ask me. Maybe it flips back around when it saves. Is that what it does? I don't know anything about technology. And yet I figure out all their algorithms and stuff too. Mm. It's the beginning of the shaking. I will not be queen. Never. 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 Read my lips, never. I will never be the Queen of England, United Kingdom. I'll never have Maureen Elizabeth Dobb for Queen. In fact, I don't think they will ever have monarchy ever again. The Antichrist will seize, seize it by intrigue and then set himself up as king. Yeah, it's done. I have formally abdicated. I formally abdicated. I don't know if I should say anything else, Lord. I'm a bond servant of Christ. I'm a daughter of the Most High God. I am royalty in Jesus. I am a royal priesthood. And they fucked with the wrong family. They really fucked with the wrong family. God will give me royal authority. I rule and reign with Jesus in heavenly places. I am a king and a priest unto my God, Yahweh, Elohim El Elyon. I am not the Christ. I am not Antichrist. I am not the Christ. I am not false prophet. But I am a prophet of the Most High God. And I'm ready to roar for him. Lord will roar from Zion. Time for the king to roar. The one true king, king of kings, lord of lords, king Jesus. The one true. Amen. Two months after this video was posted, on January 25th, 2023, the neighbor called the police after hearing the three gunshots ring out just before midnight, saying that there was roughly 10 to 15 seconds between each shot. Authorities show up to the family home, and all three of them are dead in the backyard. They were in a straight line, starting at the bottom of the porch. If you were on the bottom step, Morgan would be first, closest to the porch, laying on her back, face up, with her head closest to the steps, and her feet going south. Her mother Deborah was right in front of her, also laying on her back, face up, with her head closest to the steps, and her feet going out. Finally, James was in front of his wife, Deborah, laying face down with his feet closest to the porch and his head going south. And they were in a straight line extending away from the porch. Morgan, Deborah, James. When investigators looked at Morgan and Deborah, they both had empty gun holsters on their hip, but James didn't. Morgan was found still wearing earmuffs that were covering her ears, as well as two more pair of ear protection being found lying on the ground in between James and Deborah. So none of this made sense to them until they found the notes, the handwritten notes, that matched the evidence that they were left with. These notes aren't overly detailed about why this occurred, but according to the chief and investigators, there is no reason or evidence to suggest that anyone else was involved in this, saying that what they found written in the family's notes is exactly what took place. 
there's no perfect way for me to tell you exactly when Morgan decided that she needed to die, or when this all started brewing, but it's safe to say it was at least for nine months. We know this because a letter written by Deborah refers to another letter written in the same tone about nine months prior to their deaths. The note left behind by Deborah said multiple things. One thing that it spoke about was the evil that had mounted against Morgan, but there's no explanation to that statement. She then goes on to write about her and Morgan taking their lives and the joint decision that they had come to. She also refers to a verse in the Bible saying Samuel 1 28. Morgan chose the date, I believe I have to be with her. The rest of the letter isn't cited, but it says it's written as if Deborah was speaking to God and to her husband James as if he wasn't going to perish with them. James also left behind a handwritten note, and it stated he was crushed when his daughter told him that she needed to end her life. James would apparently write that he wasn't ready to die just yet. However, once he realized that his wife and daughter were going to go through with this, he didn't want to live alone without them. So by the end of that letter, that message had kind of shifted and it seemed that he was ready to do so. The first letter that I referred to written by Deborah was dated January 19th, 2023, and it's unclear when James wrote his. There were additional writings found, none really from Morgan though, at least that is public knowledge. They did find a very detailed list written by Morgan of things that she needed to accomplish before the day of death. Things like having a conversation with her father, clipping the dog's nails, and writing her family letters, along with a multitude of other things to accomplish. Other than that, there wasn't much else that Morgan wrote specifically referring to why she decided to die and what evil was coming after her. A couple of the last pieces of writing that they found at the house was a last will, a living will, and instructions on what to do with the family dog, as well as where to find documents. The last letters written were the day of, and were two suicide notes written by James and Deborah. They both wrote that they were clearly dying of their own free will, and this was a choice that they had made. However, James wrote that being they only had two guns, and he was far too shaky to pull the trigger, his wife Deborah was going to do it for him. Then he signed and dated it. Deborah would write almost the same exact thing, that she was too shaky to pull the trigger. Therefore, Morgan was going to do it for her. Then she signed and dated it. These letters were dated January 24th, 2023, the same night that their neighbor would hear the gunshots just before midnight. Investigators would compare these written suicide notes with other documents and things that the parents had signed, and it all checks out that these were written by the parents. If we really think about it, the way their bodies were positioned adds up to what they found in the notes. James was at the front of the line and then was shot in the back of the head by his wife and fell forward. Then Deborah was shot by Morgan who was standing behind her and she fell backwards laying face up. Finally, Morgan shot herself and fell backwards towards the porch, extending their bodies out in a straight line. This would also give credit to the three pairs of ear protection they found, as well as the gun holsters. There were two shell casings found next to Morgan on each side of her, and according to the notes, she is the only one who fired two shots. There was also no shell casings next to James. Autopsies weren't even done on the family, because the evidence lined up with the story they were given, and there was no reason to suspect foul play. Now, does any of this give us an idea just how this became their reality? No, absolutely not. It's just my belief that this is far deeper than anyone could possibly know unless you were someone in that household on a regular basis. There's a lot of reporting done on this story. Like some places, you will read that the family were fierce Trump supporters, which could possibly be true but has nothing to do with this outcome. There was also a rumor that a tarp had been placed over the bodies before they were found, but it's just that, a rumor. There's also an article stating that her parents were way too strict in religion and her upbringing, and that's what drove Morgan to go crazy, as well as some other mentions that I just don't think have the support to call facts. If I had to guess, I'd say during the insane spike in mental health issues during the pandemic, 
she was suffering from a mental illness that went undiagnosed and untreated until it was too late. Then I think, no fucking way. Why would two parents hear that their daughter wants to die and say, okay, hubby, you got nine months to get in the right mindset. We're going with her. It feels like if Morgan was writing things down to show the camera, as well as creating a multiple page list, she would have definitely written something referring to this choice and what was going on. She actually did tell her mother that she was suffering from auditory hallucinations that weren't getting better at all, which could easily explain the evil mounted against her, because if she's seeing and hearing things on the daily telling her that she is the Antichrist, that would ultimately lead us right back to mental health issues. Then again, I have no idea, and at this point, the case is closed. Tell me what you think happened here. Is it as simple as it's been laid out to be? Three family members came to a joint decision to kill themselves over their daughter's evil? Is there something far darker than we realize as people on the outside looking in? What I do know for sure is you never truly know what goes on behind closed doors. Alright guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you made it to the end, go down to the comment section and comment weirdos so I know. If you want to, you can follow me on Instagram at Robert Clausen with two ends. If you have a story suggestion, DM me on there. I think that's all I have for you guys today. Again, I truly appreciate your support. Until the next video, peace.